It's the second season of the Magical Mommy Monday podcast. Jen and Angela are two moms raised on Disney magic, figuring out parenthood one day, one milestone, and sometimes one meltdown at a time. Thanks for listening and enjoy this week's new episode. Guys, we don't know what we're going to talk about today. (laughs) We are doing a Frank and Jen theme park Thursday episode. (laughs) It's been we so just... long that it's been just us. Um, we're like, what do we do? We we don't have a guest this week. No, what's we're happening? Just, we're just walking in and, and picking a door. Yeah. I have we have no idea. We we, no. we were just talking about Disney Springs. So I yeah. guess we could start there. We could. I was telling her about the MM store. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's over or underrated. I think it's underrated. I don't, I don't know what the word is, I guess. What stands out to you about it the most? Okay. Well, if you are, you know, a member, an ally of the LGBT community, there mm-hmm. is pride stuff everywhere because cool. M&M's, mm-hmm. rainbow, right? Yeah. So much pride stuff, so much rainbow stuff. Obviously, there are M&M's of every single color, but mm-hmm. there is like m M&M and X Disney merch too. Mm-hmm. There's just way more stuff than I was expecting in there. I was kind of expecting to be underwhelmed. It's like, oh my gosh, it's an M&M store where you right. get M&Ms. Wow. Like groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, the merch was really, really cool. I almost bought, what was it? I think it was a Tumblr. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't, and I don't know why, but it was like an M&M mini mouse type one. It's right. Very, very cute. I think because I have a bunch of them and my husband's like, I swear to God, if you buy one more, you're going to have to get rid of five because we just don't have room in our, in our uh, cupboards anymore. Right. You guys call it cabinets or cupboards? Cabinet. I call it cabinets. I don't know why I went cupboards. Oh, I, I figured that was just. It's not the Minnesota way. No? I just, no, I just think little mice, like Cinderella mice in there. Anyway, no. I digress. Anyway. And I was mentioning Gideon's cookies. I, uh, I guess this is a good tip. Uh, There's a virtual queue that you can get in and then you don't have to wait the four hours in line like everyone else. Mm -hmm. Um, my own spoiler, I am not truly just blown away by the cookie. Everyone else is like, Oh my gosh, look at, no, it's, it's like a cookie with, it's an undercooked cookie with a ton of chocolate chips in it. That is a Gideon's cookie. Is it good? Yes. Is it delicious? Absolutely. Mm. Is it something I'd wait four hours in line for it? No, mm-hmm. it's not. Mm-hmm. Go to yeah. Amaretz, go to the Ganachery. Right. You know, go to a patisserie in France. <laughs> Love it. I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm out to hurt feelings today, I guess. I have two questions, two follow-ups. Okay. Um, Number one. Although I'm forgetting my second one already. Number one. Um, <laughs> Actually, my first one is not a question. So now I just have to remember one question. So I have a comment and a question. Maybe I'll start over and you can edit that all out. I have a comment and a question. The first <laughs> is that we have an M&M store in Times Square in New York City. I've actually oh. never been there. So what would be classic of me is to visit something in Disney first, then, yes. Yes. you know, around the corner. Not really, but, you know, Um so that makes sense that I should go there first. I remember my question mm-hmm. and that was, do you personally feel virtual cues are the way of the future? Well, <clears throat> to your Times Square point, Jen, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we are getting an M&M store at the Mall of America. And I do oh. feel like we should make a reel of our experiences. I do like that. Mm-hmm. Okay, stay tuned on like, that one. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. We can do okay. so much with this. Okay. I do think that virtual queues, I mean, do we wonder, are they going to replace fast passes? Right. I mean, I think that's always a big debate since Rise has started. But now to even see like a dining retail location using it is like, is this just the way of everything can can you just wander around Disney Springs, but World of Disney is insane. Hey, come back in an hour mm-hmm. and we'll get you in. What, what does the future look like of Disney? I don't really like it. Mm-hmm. I, I it, Okay, don't get me wrong. It was great. Like we got in the virtual queue. Mm-hmm. 
I forgot what we did, wandered around, got a drink at Jack Lindsay's, came back, waited 10 minutes, picked out what cookie we wanted in line, went in, was very surprised by the inside of Gideon's. I'm not going to ruin it if you've never been inside. I was just not expecting it. I didn't right. really know what to expect, mm-hmm. but I walked in. I'm like, oh, this, okay, all right. Um, but then I think about the stress of trying to get in the virtual queue for Rise mm-hmm. or Hagrid's at Universal. And it just takes the fun out of your trip. If you get the fast passes in advance, you know, the 60, 90 days in advance before your trip, Mm -hmm. then all of that stress is over by the time your trip approaches. And then you could just have fun. Right. But when you have to get up at seven and you're like sitting there and then you have two seconds before they're all sold out and it's, Mm -hmm. oh, you're screwed. That's it. You don't, it's your only Hollywood studios day and you don't get to ride rise. Yeah. You know, that it kind of ruins your trip in a way. Yeah. I'm not a fan. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I kind of go back and forth with things because overall I'm just not a fan of how you have to do Disney at this point. Um, the fact that, I mean, let's even remove COVID because I know a lot of things are different right now with that. So that's, that's a whole other ball game, but just in regular times, Disney, the fact that, you know, you're making reservations and then it's like, well, oh, you're going next month? Well, I don't know how many dining locations are going to be available because all these other people who booked six months ago have already gotten their dining reservations 60 days out because everyone's waiting up until midnight and on the computer and Mm -hmm. on their phones, making sure they get what they want. Or when fast passes were available, same thing with those. And there's just so much planning. And when it came to Disney, I mean, I like to plan things, but not Disney. I like to just be like, Let's see. You know what? You want to just go to Epcot tomorrow? Yeah, let's go to Epcot. Yeah, okay. See. Oh, should we try to see if we can eat here? And sure, there were times where you wouldn't necessarily get into the restaurant you wanted by calling the day of. But, you know, to have to plan so much in advance is crazy. And now to add like the idea of virtual cues and getting up at 7 a.m. while you're on a trip to stress out about it, I agree with you. It's like that does not seem ideal to me. I do like it better than having to go into the park at 5 a.m. and then yes. wait until 7 a.m. and then have to go and do the virtual That was queue. horrible. But then there's like a part of me who I kind of like the idea of the virtual queue as opposed to waiting on the lines for so mm-hmm. long. Because even with the fast passes, those lines sometimes are longer. Right. I mean, if you go to the Jungle Cruise, that fast pass line is longer than the regular line yeah. almost every time. I know. So there is <sighs> something nice about it, but it's all like, uh, just I want to just be able to go and do what I want to do. And I'm sure a lot of people feel like that, especially with the money you spend. And like you said, to spend the money and have one mm-hmm. Hollywood Studios days, especially how things are going right now when park reservations are a thing and you they're filling up so fast. And it's like, I could so only go stressful. one day on my trip and you can't get on a major ride. And maybe you would have waited seven hours for it because you just really wanted to be on that ride. It's like crazy. I mean, Disney's making bank though. Oh yeah. uh, If you don't make the theme park reservations fast enough, which is what happened to us Mm -hmm. um, for our family trip coming up in a couple of weeks. Well, my kids really want to go to Hollywood studios. So we Mm -hmm. are probably going to pay to add the park hopper so we could get in. Mm -hmm. Now, are we going to get to ride rise? No, but they really want to go to galaxy's edge. And Mm -hmm. so we will probably end up paying the park hopper, which you have to pay for Mm -hmm. the entire time of your stay. Not just for one day, Mm -hmm. which is like super crappy. So Disney's making bank in that way. It's just, it's never, in my opinion, someone who's been a part of the Disney community, Mm -hmm. worked in it for several years. Mm -hmm. It's never been harder to plan a trip. It's never been more stressful to plan a trip. You know, I've been doing this for years. And in the past, I could book a trip in the same amount of time and get to do everything I wanted. Mm -hmm. Uh, and get to eat almost everywhere I wanted. The last two times, last time I ate at one place Mm -hmm. and it was Liberty Tree Tavern. Um, Everyone was vaccinated, guys. Mm -hmm. And um, it's because it was the only thing left at Magic Kingdom and I booked it that day. And this time we've made one reservation so far and that's because all the other days are completely out of reservations. And- 
it's, it's never been this way. Like I've been able to get into, maybe this was like a fairy godmother on my shoulder, but I've been able to get Cinderella's Royal table like a mm-hmm. week beforehand for right. eight people, you know? Yeah. And that's just not the case anymore. We're entering a different time of mm-hmm. Disney trip planning. And I feel like, I don't know. I, I don't, I hope it doesn't stay. Mm-hmm. And just before I, I let you continue, um, <laughs> for those going to the theme parks and, you know, like you want to go up to, um, a restaurant and ask them if they've had any cancellations, mm-hmm. what they're going to tell you is that everything is now updated on the app. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be like, we don't even see any cancellations. Right. We don't see any new reservations. It's all on the app. Oh and they've goodness. now added a wait list to the app too, if right. you're close enough to that restaurant. So it kind of makes it more frustrating because there's like no, there's no chance for any magic at all. It's like, yeah. you just have to like hit refresh on the app forever. Oh my goodness. I did have a question about the park hopper that you may know better than me at this point, if you're looking into it. Um, so are you, once you're in the parks and let's say the, you know, reservations or the park reservations themselves are full or whatever, yeah. but if you have a park hopper, are you guaranteed to be able to get to the park you want in the afternoon? From everything that I've seen, I've not seen one person who has not been able to get into another park. Okay. Um, and even while we were there, um, in April, we had already been to magic kingdom that day. Mm-hmm. And Michael and I were like, eh, we're without the kids. Yeah. We're at the boardwalk. Let's just go crazy and have dinner at Epcot. Mm-hmm. So we added the park hopper. Um, and that's when we found out, which, you know, in the back of my brain, I knew, yeah. um, you couldn't just add it for one day. You had to add it for the entire time, mm-hmm. even if you were just using it for one day. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's good at least because I think they'd have a lot of unhappy people if you're paying for the Mm -hmm. park hopper, but it's like, oh, well, sure. But you can go to Animal Kingdom because that's available, but Magic Kingdom isn't. It's like, well, no, I paid for the park hopper. I want to hop to where I want to go. So it's after two o'clock, but you could park hop two or three times. Hmm. Interesting. And not one person I talked to has had an issue, you know, going to Magic Kingdom and then hopping over to Hollywood studios, for example. Very interesting. Who knew we had so much Disney talk to do? I know. (laughs) I guess I had some facts and figures to share. I love it. It's not, okay. Listen, you were doing good with the New York accent. When you get to share, you have to go share, share. 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 There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. But sometimes just so you know, you guys say ours sometimes and then other times you don't so you sure. can't blame me for not no. knowing when it's okay you can't you can't take new york accent advice from me specifically in a regular conversation because i do try my hardest to not go down the new okay. york accent route and soon i'm going to send you video of high school jen so you can really see me in my prime and hear that accent yes. for- is this when you had the acrylics it is <laughs> <laughs> and my son in <laughs> oh yes oh I watched do you okay have you heard of Brad Mondo does he no. pop up on your Facebook he doesn't okay, so he's a hairstyle a professional hairstylist like he has like a hair brand uh-huh. he, he shows up he likes to show up on my Facebook feed and he like he watches um people like do YouTube videos of their hair and stuff and okay. he is either horrified or he's like, this looks really good. Blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. One of the things he did is he tried different sun in products oh and God. judged whether it really made a difference and lined your hair. And, um, I, I, I don't even remember the results. What? That was like the <laughs> worst story ever. <laughs> no, it, I, I'm going to look that up because it's probably pretty funny to watch. Okay. The punchline is that they worked a little, all of them yeah. worked a little. Sure. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, did not get my mom's storytelling abilities at all. Okay. So another thing I wanted to talk about because this is Jen and my catch up time. Yeah. We really, I, I told her, I said, we needed a happy hour <laughs> and I'm drinking water. Um, oh my gosh. My nose is so itchy. I got to leave it alone. Yeah. Um, I decided to try stitch fix this. Month. Oh, tell me more. Yes. So I'm very, I'm very cheap except apparently when buying theme park merchandise. Sure. 
as one is. Yeah. And I hate buying clothes for myself. It's yeah. the last thing I'll ever do. I always know it's time to buy clothes when both my mom and Michael are like, okay, mm-hmm. we're going shopping. Yeah. Time. Yeah. But during the pandemic, I live in sweatpants and a t-shirt, which mm-hmm. my husband's a very lucky man. <laughs> you to tell me. Um, but I, I just decided one day it, this is, this is the time I don't mm-hmm. know how to dress myself. So yeah. I can barely decorate my house as seen on Twitter with my 30 swatches of paint on the wall. I so I decided to try stitch fix. Mm-hmm. And for those of you who don't know what stitch fix is, which, you know, it's, it's, it's on social media. Mm-hmm. Basically you, you sign up with a stylist and every month or every other month or every three months, they send you five pieces and you can keep what you want or you could return what you want. Mm-hmm. And you like, you like go through a little quiz and then you thumbs up or thumbs down things you don't like. Okay. So I got my first box May 4th mm-hmm. May and 4th. I got, yeah, May, thank you. <laughs> and also with you. Yeah. <laughs> Catholics. <laughs> and I got a pair of shorts, jean shorts, light wash jeans a little like shawl thing, okay. um, a white shirt, and then, oh, a jumper. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Did yeah. you like them all? Okay. So I liked the jumper, but my husband didn't. Mm-hmm. And my daughter didn't. She's like, I really don't like that on you. <laughs> like, well, I guess I'm not keeping it then. And I liked the white shirt. It was like $68. Mm, for like mm-hmm. a shirt yeah you know and yeah. I'm cheap uh, you're talking to Miss Target and Miss Old Navy I mean you exactly. do not have to explain yourself to me mm-hmm. that's where I <laughs> shop like I'll do like the Banana Republic outlet the yeah. Gap outlet oh yeah 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 mm-hmm. cheap I don't like buying yeah. clothes no nope. no um I loved the fit of the pants but I am not a light wash person this was like mm-hmm. a light wash right and then I like the shorts but again like I'm practical mm-hmm. I have shorts why do mm-hmm. I need to buy these when they're all torn up Right. They fit great. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling that I'm going to be a big fail on the stitch fix, but because I returned them all, they're like, we're going to send you another fix. Oh, and then the shell, I hated. I hated it. It was awful. It was huge on me. It didn't look good. It just, Mm -hmm. I'm realizing that most shirts just don't look good on me because I I don't have boobs. I just don't. Shirts just don't fit right. You have to find the right shirt. But a very small torso. Holy Yeah. Small mm-hmm. boobs, short torso, and very long legs. It's just a weird shape. It's the same. You have, a, you have a long torso, don't you? Yeah, but I also have, like, long legs. And you would think that would match up a little bit, but it doesn't. So all your shirts are short? Yeah. I, 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 first them? of all, I have no sense of style. So I have looked into Stitch Fix, and there are times when I'm like, you know what? One day, I don't know what, not right now, whenever I do like a shopping spree, I'm going yes. to need people that know what they're doing to yes. come with me. Because for me to buy some filler clothes right now, or, oh, I have this occasion mm-hmm. to go to, uh, first of all, I hate, I have always hated shopping for clothes. Like that has yes. never been me anyway. And I am more of a comfort kind of gal and a hangout kind of gal. So I'm We're not- lounge wear people. Yes. I'm not yes. like- I'm not fancy, although I do like to get fancy when the occasion calls for it, but like, and I can kind of, I'm better with that kind of shopping. Like, oh, I have a wedding to do. Okay. Let me get a dress. I'm a little bit better with that. There's a goal. Yes. Yes. But I can't just look around and Mm -hmm. I also can't do like everyday wear. Like I'm not good with that either. I'm like, oh, I need a new pair of jeans. Let me just get jeans. But like, I don't know what looks good. So I'm going to need someone to come with me. Mm-hmm. Like dress me and be like these things go together. Like yeah. they're I'm the person who's like passing a mannequin, going, "That's cute. Can I find all of those things in my size?" <laughs> That's what my mom does. She's like, "I'm gonna buy that outfit." <laughs> yeah, like, but I just and I I have gotten wart. The becoming a mom has made me ten thousand oh, yeah. times worse when it comes to any kind of self. So so please. Mm-hmm. When I worked in like a corporate office, I was forced to like, oh, I need some clothes and I need a good rotation. So I'm not wearing the same things over the mm-hmm. time at the same time and all that. So like I had a, I had like not a good sense of style, but I had like 
I was more in tune to what was out there. I have no clue of like what's in style. And now I feel like I spent my thirties with like little babies having no idea what's out there. And now I'm like, wait, do I have to dress older now? Like, what are the rules? I don't know what the rules are. I just need someone to just help me. I know. Whenever I get to that point. (laughs) That's why I did this. And so it's a $20 styling fee. But then they put that $20 into whatever you buy. Okay. And you can tell them if you want to do more affordable or more luxury. Mm -hmm. And I did a mix and I feel like they just sent me luxury. (laughs) And and so I just told them like, this is too expensive. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry. I can't pay $68 for a shirt. I can't do it. Yeah. I can't. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that was a good deal. And then because I sent everything back, they're, they're sending me another stitch for free. And I'm like, it's not you, it's me. I just, I'm But cheap. can't you technically do that anyway? Couldn't you, even if you liked all the clothes, couldn't you wear them for the month, but then like send them back and be like, okay, now send me something else. So they only give you three days to look over the clothes. What? Yes. No. And try them on. And then you have to return oh, them. But mind. what they do now because I guess it was a popular request is that they let you preview your fix Mm -hmm. and then um, even choose your items, which is what I did. I chose my items, Mm -hmm. which ended up apparently being a mistake. And I should have just (laughs) let them choose. Like I'm paying you to style me. You need to But let me make the mistakes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, they, they give you like 10 out 10 things and then yeah. you can pick from the things. So I'm not completely like digging my own grave. They're giving yeah. me the shovels at least. Yeah. But, um, I mean, like it's stuff that I would have never picked out Yeah. or bought mm-hmm. and like the fit was good. You know, you talk about your body type and everything and your sizing. Um, and the more you do it, the better better tuned they are into what you like. Right. So I kind of expected this first one not to go up because it, you know, it's like, it's the first one. Right. So it's all very interesting. Also what's hard is when you're looking at something online or you even see someone else wear it and you're like, Oh my God, I love that. I think it would look good on me. There are so many times I have, I've even gone out shopping being like, yes, this shirt will be, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And I try it on and I'm like, ew, why is it looking like that? And it's just a whole different thing than what you had in your head. So trying it on versus actually just looking at it is always tough too. Okay. I'm going to share my screen and you'll okay. see, I, I think they did an even worse job if possible, <laughs> which like, this is not the way oh, so these are your new stitches. Then. This is not a way to get sponsored by stitch fix. <laughs> <laughs> I am not doing thanks any for our favors. first potential sponsorship on the podcast. Is I the know. One? Yeah. Okay. So this is what they let you choose from. Slightly. My mom always tells me no one looks good in gray, but I like the gray. Your mom would have hated my entire wardrobe when I was working in the corporate world because I was basically black and gray with an occasional color. (laughs) I would never pick this out on my own. I like that. It's like a flannel shirt, but it's not flannel. It's like fancy flannel. It is, but it's white. Right. So, and not, and, and not flannel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is flannel. A it's like Project a plat- runway. Here I yeah. come. <laughs> They're offering me a pink denim jacket, which I just like, I would only wear it with one outfit and never again, because I don't know how to style things, but I will right. say stitch fix gives you cards mm. with your, with your fix. Yeah. And then different outfits you can wear it with, which I really appreciate. Oh, that's good. That's cool. Yeah. I can dress other people, but I cannot dress myself. Mm -mm. I can bring my mom shopping and be like, nope, you need a necklace with this. And then I look at myself and I'm like, you can totally wear the Powerline t-shirt out at that club. (laughs) People will think that you're nostalgic and hip. Yeah. Um, Do I want to leave any feedback with my stylist? Yeah. Is this going to be ugly? Tell me now. Thank you. (laughs) I would like to know what to wear underneath the cardigans because I'm stupid. <laughs> I didn't write that. I would like to know what to wear underneath the cardigans, please. Does this need to be a YouTube series? <laughs> Dress Angela. Dress Angela. And we just go live and we do this whole thing and have people vote. Okay. Are you guys getting anything out of this episode? 
<laughs> I'm really sorry if you're not. I love it. What did you have to say? Oh, I was just going to say that maybe the thing we end this episode on yes. is something yes. we were talking about prior to recording, which is how to be busy again, because we spend so much time not being busy. And now life is starting to get back to somewhat normal, more normal for some than others, depending on where you live, depending on what you do, whatever it is, things are changing. And really, you know what, that's what it comes down to. It's the change. It, changing. it yeah, you and do that well. I, no, it's the Dillos thing. I'm just holding a pair of earrings while I talk to you. <laughs> it's the Dillos thing. Like we did not do well with everything closing down and we had to get used to that. Mm-hmm. But then we got used to it for a year mm-hmm. and now we have to get used to being di- bit dizzy, busy. Um, like I told Jen that, that I just don't write her back anymore because I, <laughs> like I told my, she God, doesn't like, like me anymore. I, I told like, I'm like, I live my life one quarter mile at a time. Like I never know what's going on anymore. <laughs> He'll tell me something that he has going on in three days. It's the day before you never told me that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I've almost been late for work things. Cause I forgot that I had it. Cause I don't mm-hmm. look at the calendar until the night before it's, it's been bad. Yeah. No, I get it. I was marking today because as we're recording this, it is Cinco de Mayo. And Mm -hmm. one year ago was the first time we ordered food again since everything had shut down. Did you like like, wash it off when it came? Um, Yes. Do you know how long I wiped down groceries? That went into the summer, I think, but I don't remember when I stopped. I swear it was like September. You were still wiping it down. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Um, anyway, so yeah, so that's like to think back to that, like, oh my God, this was like the first time and that was huge. And we were like, kind of nervous about it and this is okay. And now to, I mean, you know, the kids are starting to have more things going Mm -hmm. on weekends as we're looking at weekends. We're like, oh my God, can we get a free weekend again? I, these are things I miss. And I know a lot of people have done like TikToks about it and put it on social media of like. There are certain things about those early days of shutdown that I will miss, such as not having plants on the weekends, not having to do something on the weekend and just being like, oh, this is nice. I can just do whatever I want. Stay home. Whatever. Plants, plants being canceled. Yes. Best feeling ever. So good. It just for an introvert like myself. Oh my gosh. There's nothing better than someone being like, guys, we got to cancel the night. Oh, thank God. I don't have to get out of my pajamas. This is the best. Right. I, I never, I'm never hurt by someone canceling plans with me. Never. No. No. Mm-mm. And it's like just those early days of looking at the calendar and like the whole next month, just, you just free. It's just free. All of it. And people are walking around the neighborhood saying hi from across the street, just being friendly. Everyone's out. Everyone's just in it together. You know what really struck me as like a sense of normality Mm -hmm. is I have been sick this week. Yeah. And I automatically didn't think I had COVID. Mm -hmm. And that was at first. Normally I'd be like, I'm dying. This is good for me. Losing my smell. I haven't lost my smell. Right. Um, but my kids, because everyone's vaccinated, my kids have started back in daycare. And yeah. within a week, we were all sick. Of course. And I asked daycare because I'm like, I think I'm going to keep them home just in case. Mm-hmm. And they're like, everyone here has a runny nose and a cough. Okay. Yeah. Hey, that would have been nice to know. <laughs> Me, I guess I'll keep them home anyway mm-hmm. because I said I would. But yeah, again, thanks for telling me. Right. Um, but that's when I thought, oh, like things are evolving again is I didn't automatically think like we have COVID. This mm-hmm. is just a cold. We just, yeah. because kids were around kids and kids are little germ factories. Yep. But it's weird. Like I was telling Michael, wow, I was a freak last year. Like I was so hyper anxious. Like, mm-hmm. thank God I, I went on anxiety meds and God love him. Like he's so, he's so good to me. <laughs> like, well, Angela, but we also didn't know anything about this virus right yeah and we were as cautious as we needed to be because we didn't have any information so yeah Mm -hmm. we were hyper aware yep 
and yeah, we may have gone overboard at times, but it's because we just were working with the information we had. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. We'll blame my anxiety on that then. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's exactly why. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm happy that I'm able to see some more people now. That's nice. But it's like, I'm, I need to find that balance again of like, yeah the, well, we can't see anyone. Everything is shut down and we're staying home every weekend and the calendar is clear and every weekend is full up. Like, no, I want something in the middle again. Like it also, I think made me realize I want some sort of boundaries and some sort of like, no, we need to make us a priority and Mm -hmm. everything else can be figured out. And we don't have to be doing things and feel guilty if we don't do certain things or whatever it is, you know. I totally get it. You have to put family first Mm -hmm. and there's such a drive. I don't know if it's just in America or whatever to Mm -hmm. be busy. Yes. I'm the busiest person on the block. And I just don't feel that way. And I, I, part of my anxiety, I, anxiety is triggered by plans, Mm -hmm. knowing I have something to do, whether it's on my to-do list for someone else, like, like, a like my contracting thing that I do, or Mm -hmm. if it's like singing for church or working with my medical Mm -hmm. acting thing, it gives me anxiety. Yeah. Um, but easing into it the way that we have the past month or two has been good. Cause yeah. it's just, it started out with like one thing a month, then mm-hmm. a couple things. And so that's been good. Um, I had another point. And then as I was rambling, it just ran out of my head. Oh, it happens. Window. Goodbye. <laughs> See you next time. Maybe on the next episode, See you'll come you back. <laughs> oh, oh, I remembered. What's going to be exciting for me is to see you go on a trip and see what that's going to be like for you. Weird. Because Frankie's going on a trip. He is. In the next couple of weeks. He is. So we'll get to see his point of view. I know. We were just this past weekend um, visiting our great uncle for his 100th birthday. And crazy. You know, we can call it a party, but it was a very small group of people. But I absolutely had like a wave of anxiety come over me as I'm half vaxxed at this point. I'll get my, by the time this episode drops, I'll have my second dose. But (laughs) everyone else there vaccinated, like everybody else was done. So it was just me hanging on by that one dose. Um, But just knowing that like I was going to be around people again, I'm going to be in a house I haven't been in in a very long time. I'm, you know, like are people going to hug? How do we greet people weird. again? You know, it's like all of that stuff, all of a sudden, as I'm getting, I'm like, yay, this is going to be so, oh my God. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> like it just This wave came over me, but it was, you know, it's, it's funny how like something that would have seemed like no big deal and normal a year and a half ago now is like, oh, that's different. This is kind of weird to do. No, it, well, my brother's barbecue competition was last mm-hmm. weekend and everyone was spread out, but then you had to go to a meeting and people were, were even spreading out during this meeting and it was outdoors. Yeah. And I was still like, oh, I need to put my mask I on. Like, I don't know how we're ever going to do concerts again. I know. Oh my God. Or gather for fireworks. I will like, I'm, I'll just be like, this doesn't feel good to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know how we're going to do it. I'm like, I've been changed as a person. Oh Yeah. No, and I'll see things like videos people will put up of concerts or shows or, you know, being on a train or whatever it is from like, you know, two years ago. And I'm like, oh, God, that's like a lot of people. Oh, my gosh. Like <laughs> watching together. Wishes now. Oh, my goodness. Me anxiety. Yeah. When you think about how you can feel someone's Ugh. like body heat as you mm-hmm. wait for the fireworks to mm-hmm. start. Yep. Oh, People. Like I was always skeeved by certain things. Like if I was sitting on a train going into the city, let's say, and the seats are tall, but there's right. there's holes in between, kind of like sitting on a plane. So if someone coughed or something, I was oh. always like, oh, oh, is that in my hair now? Oh my God, I'm so grossed <laughs> out. But now that would be like, oh my God, oh God, I got to go home. <laughs> okay. You know what I didn't think about till just now? I'm talking about this being so grossed out, like feeling someone's body heat. Yeah. 
when I went to jujitsu on Monday, that's right. You were literally all up in people's business <laughs> with someone's body sweat and didn't think twice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, granted we were vaccinated and we yeah. wore a mask, but still like that's as, but that's, that's it as too. invasive as you can get. Yeah. It's like this weird place now of okay, well, everyone's vaccinated. It's fine. Like I did hug family members over the weekend and, you know, I'm in it and I'm just going like, oh, this is who I am. This, yeah, obviously I'm going to hug everybody. But then like afterwards, I'm like, I I feel like I did that too easily. Is that bad? I need to really stop and think about these things. And like, I I know, but it just like the returning to normalcy in certain situations feels a little too normal that then you like, wait a second, but it's also, there's a little bit of anxiety before doing it too. It's very weird. It's a very You gotta weigh the risk though. Like in our situation, Mm -hmm. like, like I can, I don't know anyone who has actually gotten COVID at my gym. Yeah. You know, like from Mm jujitsu, um, now it's like saying that no one at Disney who's been to right. Disney has gotten it. But yeah, as far as I know, I mean, the protocols are good because yeah. they want to stay open because their livelihood depends on it. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just about making those educated choices that you feel comfortable with. And, yeah. you know, when you said you just went in and hugged a family member without thinking about it, I mean, how starved are we for affection from other right? people too? Exactly. The amount of hugs I've given out in the last year and a half, very, I mean... Yeah. Next to none. So yeah. And I'm, and I'm a hugger. So, you know, that's weird too. When I saw Angela come through that tunnel at Magic Kingdom, there I is. opened my arms up ready to give her a big old hug. Oh, I'm so happy. because I'm a huge <laughs> hugger too. Just so you know, if you ever meet Jen and I, you're going to hugging hug. you. So we've worn and then we're going to think about it later hugger. and wonder if we gave you COVID. <laughs> Was that okay? Yeah. Oh my God. What do you think? Should we end the episode? I think so. Love how we didn't mention that this was the Magical Mommy Monday podcast. Yeah. By the way, you've been listening to the Magical Mommy Monday podcast. You know, you probably saw it in the title. <laughs> right? Maybe we'll throw an intro in the beginning of this. Probably not, though. So. No. I mean, this is this is a whatever episode. Yeah. You probably learned something about Disney, though, right? I think it was informative and I think yeah. people need to hear about Stitch Fix because for me, I've looked into it a lot, but I've never done it. So it's interesting to me. And I think everyone relates <laughs> to the busyness. So you know what? As we analyze our own episode here in real time, I think we did great. <laughs> I'm going to love editing this, let me tell you. Uh, I would say when it comes to Stitch Fix, give it a try. Yeah. It's going to be $20 if you don't like it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And then, I mean, $20 is a lot, I'll admit. But like, just if you're curious, yeah, that's all it's going to waste you mm-hmm. if you don't like anything. But in my case, they're sending me a free run, free one. So, I mean, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Like all right, guys. Well, it's been fun. We hope you're having a great day, night, whatever you're doing. Maybe one of these days I'll get the outro right. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Magical Mommy Monday podcast. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Magical Mommy Monday, on Twitter at Magic Mom Monday, or you can email us at Magical Mommy Mondays at gmail.com. The music you heard on this episode was produced by Matt Harvey. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.